Right, today I'm going to review this thing. This is a uh, Philips Festoon Bulb LED. Um, I'll just go over the relevant things on the box first. It uh, claims to be 43 millimeters. I wouldn't get too hung up on that because um, the old filament bulbs, um, the, the way they fit in the holders, it doesn't really matter. Uh, plus or minus five millimeters is fine because you can just bend the prongs and make um, a different size bulb fit. So don't worry too much about that within reason. Um, they claim to this to be a 4000 Kelvin color bulb, uh, which they, instead of claiming warm white like Osram do, they just say bright white. But anyway, I would call 4000 Kelvin a uh, neutral or pure white as opposed to a uh, warm white, like the original filament bulb. Uh, neither is it a cold or cool white, like a 6000 Kelvin uh, version of this would be, and that would look relatively blue. Um, so yeah, and this is what I want for the interior of my car, so that's great, and I'll test it later. They claim five times more light than what, who knows. Um, I'll, again, I'll do comparative photography later so we can see. 12-year lifetime, uh, which is good. That certainly compares favorably to the competition like Osram, where they usually uh, claim about five years. I mean, in, in reality, they're probably similar, but you know, at least they're claiming something decent. Um, on the back here, they just have some um, indications about the color and then some indicative photography. Um, uh, heat resistant, vibration resistant, those are just the intrinsic qualities of LEDs. And here they say 120 degree beam angle. And as you can tell by looking here, this design of bulb has a single chip. There's nothing on the back, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, this design of bulb has a single chip on the one side, therefore the light only goes in the one direction. So you will need to uh, investigate the housing of the bulb that you're replacing with this in order to check if it is um, suitable. Because the alternative, for example, is something like this from Osram. I've done a separate review on this bulb. And um, this bulb design is all around. And the way that works is it has two chips, one on either end, and then it uses the um, diffuser to spread the light. So if you have a housing uh, with a reflector plus a refractor lens in front of the bulb, then you would want to use something like this because it'll better replace the original filament bulb. On the other hand, if you have a housing with no reflector um, and the bulb's just sort of positioned there behind the lens and there's not much behind it to reflect light, then this is what you would want because all of your usable light is going to be going in the direction that you want it to. Okay, now let's um, open this up and have a look at it. This is the bulb, I should take it out. And yes, as I explained, on the back is just a heat sink, no, no second bulb. So you only get light projected in the one direction. And the chip is behind this uh, plastic, I'm not going to really call it a lens because I don't think it is a lens, it looks it's just really a plastic cover that isn't actually doing any optical work. It seems to be there just for protection. And what we will do next is um, wire it up and compare it to the filament bulbs. It's very interesting. I don't know if you can see that, but if I touch that, it lights up slightly. A little bit of electricity passing through my skin. Anyway, let's give it a proper current. And oh my, that is quite bright when it's pointed at your eyes. So, of course, the brightness will depend on where I point this simply because it's directional but we will imagine that we are interested in that direction. And um, what I'll do is in the same shot, I will compare it for you 
to this 10 watt filament bulb, which is what it's going to be replacing. Now, apart from the color, what we're interested in here is, is assessing the brightness difference. And it's hard to tell really, because of course this is a 360 degree light, given that the filament radiates light in uh, all directions. So I don't know, it's, it's perceptually difficult to tell. So what I'm going to do rather is um, put those, put both bulbs in the car in the um, application that I intend to use the LED later. And uh, I'll take comparative photography of the, um, of the actual stuff that light's falling on so that we can get a better indication. One other thing I want to do while I'm here on the uh, test bench, so to speak, is um, just point out one other issue with replacing these filament bulbs. That was a 10 watt filament bulb that I just showed you. This is a 5 watt version of much the same thing. And of course, as you can see, it's half the brightness. Now, the the thing I want to, um, the point that I want to press home here is that um, that bulb would not really be a suitable replacement for this bulb. The reason being it's too bright. Now this is from an LED, uh, sorry, license plate light um, on my car. There are two 5 watt filament bulbs originally that go in the license plate light um, enclosures. And in that enclosure is no reflector. So this is a 5 watt filament, which in its original um, setup is essentially only radiating half, so let's say two and a half watts worth of uh, filament light at the license plate. So if you put this thing in it and you pointed it at the license plate, you're getting all of that light, 100% of that light shining on the license plate. And it's it would simply be far too bright. You'd be driving around with, um, you know, radioactive license plates essentially it, it would be quite ridiculous so you would really need to find a lower power LED. Okay the last thing I want to do on the uh, test bench here is connect this up to the ammeter and we will uh, measure the current. So that is a pretty solid 30 milliamps on a 12 volt power supply. So that comes out at a rather disappointing, um, let's say 0.36. And it's even less than that because you can see it's flickering a little bit down to um, less than the 30 milliamps. So anyway, it comes out at 0.36 watts. Um, and this is at 12 volts, so I don't know if it, um, you know, sort of 14 volts operating voltage of a uh, car power supply that it may be a little bit more. Um, but that, you know, that's a quite a lot less than the one watt that they claim. And one other thing I'll test while I'm doing this, by the way, is whether the uh, the polarity does not matter. You can you can you can you can install it any way around. So that's good. They have some circuitry in there dealing with that. Right, so the next thing I'll do is measure the uh, color temperature of this bulb, and they claim 4000 Kelvin, which as I talked about before is something like a neutral white. The way I'm going to do that is take a photograph um, of a white sheet of card, uh, which is just lit by the bulb, and I will uh, take a photograph with a uh, decent DSLR camera, and um, that will allow me when I open the resulting photograph in Photoshop, which is what you see here, that'll allow me to measure the white balance. You don't need to understand the technical details of this if you're not into photography, but I'm going to use the white balance tool up here and uh, just sample random places on this photograph. And uh, basically I'm getting a consistent measurement here of 3900 with some small variations below. But now I'm going to go with 3900 as the measurement for this. Um, so that's pretty good. That's pretty close to the 4000 claimed. Very, very slightly warmer, but that's okay. Um, yeah, good. I like it. Last thing I'm going to do is some uh, comparative photography to show you the perceptual differences in color and brightness vis-a-vis uh, -vis the original uh, 10 watt incandescent filament bulbs. I'm planning on using this bulb in my uh, boot or trunk light. 
uh, which is this really simple setup with the lamp just consisting of a plastic diffuser lens and not a lot else. Uh, there's nothing behind it, so no real reflection, which is why the Philips unidirectional design is well suited for it. Uh, so obviously when installing this kind of light, uh, it's important that the LED bulb is rotated to point in the correct direction. And here's the first comparison. Now these photos are taken on a decent camera with identical settings and white balance, and they do represent accurately uh, what you would see with your eyes. So that's the 10 watt filament on the left and the Philips LED on the right. I would say that the brightness is perceptually very similar. The major difference is in the color, obviously, um, and the qu quality of that color. If you look at the garage jack box that's there in the pictures, you can see how the colors, particularly the blues, are far better lit by the LED. Uh, so this is just a utilitarian advantage, if nothing else, and that's to say that you will be able to see colored things in the back of your car much better. So, great. And uh, here are the same images full screen. That's the incandescent bulb, and that's the LED. So as to the exact brightness difference, uh, if we look at both pictures simultaneously again, this time with histograms, we can distinguish them. So these are luminosity histograms from Photoshop, which I captured. Um, they're basically charts of the brightness levels of the photograph in question. Uh, darker areas are on the left and brighter areas are on the right of the graph. Uh, but it's not obvious from the charts themselves in this case. So if you look at the stats at the bottom, you can see that the mean brightness for the incandescent is 32, um, while the uh, LED is 37, and the median is 14 versus 17. So the Philips LED does indeed measure brighter. And now I'm going to do one more comparison, um, and this time in the cabin, uh, and using the courtesy lamp that you can see here. And this lamp has a reflector behind it. So like I said earlier, this Philips LED is really best suited to lamps, or in theory it's best suited to lamp designs without a reflector. Um, and you should expect it to compare a little less favorably in this kind of setup. But I thought I'd compare it anyway, and as you can see, it does hold its own against the 10 watt incandescent just fine. Uh, and by the way, this is the Osram all around LED that I mentioned earlier, and you can see it's just terribly dim in comparison. Um, and that's the Philips again. So just uh, on this comparison, I'd have to recommend the Philips generally as the only suitable replacement for a 10 watt bulb. Um, in pretty much any application. Now, one final point I want to make quickly is that because the Philips is just this single small chip, it does cast a sharper and harsher light. If you look at the shadows in these photos, for instance, um, look at the shadow from the steering wheel falling on the driver's seat here, notice how with the incandescent, the shadow is soft, but when looking at the Philips LED, it's quite a bit harder. So that means marginally poorer quality interior lighting if you care about that sort of thing. And um, the bulb, the Philips bulb, would really benefit from a diffuser in front of its chip to kind of try to get away from this issue. Uh, but anyway, that's really a minor complaint. I just wanted to mention it there for the people who might care about that sort of thing. Uh, and in general, I'm definitely giving this thing from Philips a positive review. Okay, hope that was helpful, because that's it.